back to Alan Wall's Photography. I'm Alan, and today I want to introduce you to my new side hustle. <laughs> that sounds terrible. If this is your first Alan Wall's Photography video, let me tell you right up front that this is not the typical Alan Wall's photography video uh, that you uh, might be expecting from the title. Please check out other videos on the channel and you'll see what we normally do here. It's mostly photography, some other stuff, but uh, this is just shameless self-plugging for a new product that I'm selling for photographers and uh, it, it is advertising, basically. <laughs> I hope it is, I hope it, it does that job. Uh, but anyway, uh, yes, this is not typical. You won't see any more like this. Uh, so don't take this as an example of uh, an Alan Walls photography, uh, photography video. I am going to tell you all about my, my uh, new shop and my new product. Before I get started, there's three really quick updates. Uh, a viewer contacted me today to ask about the macro lighting cage. And to be honest, I have put that, uh, that project on hold uh, to do this, get this, uh, this side business launched. Uh, but I went out today to the hardware store and I bought all the other stuff that I needed for the project and I plan to uh, at least start videoing it this weekend. So it shouldn't be too much longer before the macro uh, lighting cage is uh, out and ready for you to watch. Second thing is for anybody who's interested, uh, Nikon called me. Uh, it was my uh, D850's aperture control arm that was broken. They don't tell you very much about what they found, but they said they could fix it and it would cost me $300. Which for a $3,000 camera that I was beginning to think may be broken beyond repair, I was relieved. Not so relieved about the, the price, but relieved that it could be fixed. So hopefully in another week or month, uh, I don't know how long it'll take them. Never ask them how long it'll take them. They put you at the back of the line if you do that. So I don't know when it will be back, but uh, hopefully soon. I have been lost without it. The third uh, update of sorts is I had a video already to launch the middle of this week. Um, it was a compositing video. Uh, it involved a meat grinder, a handheld meat grinder, my forearm, um, two pounds of ground beef, a packet of fake fingernails and some chicken bones. And I thought it was a hysterical video and a brilliant bit of compositing. I can say that because I'm not going to be able to show it. I showed it to a non doctor friend of mine who was gagging looking at it and said it was atrocious and I should not put it on the public airwaves. I showed it to a surgeon friend of mine who just thought it was hysterical. Uh, but I think on balance, I never thought about that when I was doing the eyeball thing, that this might be against some kind of YouTube rule, but I'm not going to push my luck. <laughs> so I'm sorry. It was hysterical. But um, yeah, I just can't show it. Anyway, let me give you a little background on this whole bracelet project. I've talked about it briefly in the past, but it's pretty simple. I've already explained to you that I have quite fallen in love with doing what I'm doing through this channel. It has proven to be the most stimulating and interesting and rewarding uh, photography-based endeavor that I could have stumbled upon. I'm very grateful that I did. Uh, but because of the, the way things work, uh, this isn't a, a source of revenue. In other words, I can't, uh, I, I can't generate money from the full-time job of doing this uh, to pay for the costs of doing this, which are not insignificant. Um, and 
a lot of the stuff that I want to do, I, I won't be able to do until I'm able to, to fund it. I thought about things like Patreon, but I, I don't have enough uh, videos up. I don't have enough content to justify me asking people uh, to donate money. I think that's completely unreasonable. I don't, I feel a bit funny about doing that anyway, unless there's a real positive, tangible value in doing so, which I hope there will be at some point, but it's not now. Uh, I thought about um, an ebook and I thought about doing a course, uh, but neither of those really strike me as, uh, as something that would be appropriate at this time in the development of the channel. I have been fooling around with uh, making uh, cord bracelets ever since I taught myself to tie knots a, a few years ago. Let me show you a few examples of the kind of stuff that I make. That's just a tiny sampling of the ideas that, uh, uh, that I put together over the years. Around Christmas time, uh, a friend of mine who's a photographer, I'd given him one of these, uh, one of these prototypes and he absolutely loved it. Uh, he thought it would be a good idea uh, to sell the things to photographers. He thought they would be, uh, could be interested. My kids thought it was a good idea and they're far more experienced with uh, this kind of thing than I am, uh, but they were enthusiastic too. And I, I tend to, to uh, believe what these three kids say. They're very smart and uh, they, they all encourage me to proceed. I needed something that was unique. I needed something that nobody else was making or selling, something I had never seen uh, on, on the internet. Um, and I started experimenting and I made a lot, lot, lot of different prototypes using different parts, different kinds of cord, different color schemes until I eventually hit on the one I liked. But I decided that I needed to add variety and I came up with three different related styles. They're all called the photographer's bracelet and they come in a wide angle, a telephoto and a macro style. The wide angle uses a heavier outer cord. It's bulkier, uh, it's, it's uh, a heavier looking bracelet though it's still very light. The telephoto uses an intermediate cord of about one and a half millimeters. The third style was the macro style, and I chose this one to name the macro style because I prefer this one. I, I, I love it. It's by far the hardest to make. It takes ages to make them. Once I decided on the three styles, I had the idea of of making the most of people's brand loyalty. Uh, and that's when the idea came to me uh, to, to pick a selection of colors that would work well together for the bracelet, but would also at least be reminiscent of the color schemes used in the branding of some of the bigger camera companies. And one that I didn't even know made cameras, but I had lots of that kind of cord. That's uh, the Samsung one. So once I had the product, uh, I had to build an inventory and uh, that took a lot of 20 hour days uh, and bloody fingers and calluses that I don't think uh, will ever go away. Uh, but I built a, a, a sizable inventory of all of the different styles and uh, got them all organized and ready to ship. 
So with the product created and a decent inventory built, I started thinking about a brand. And uh, this was one of the, the ideas that, that I came up with. I didn't read this advice anywhere, and I'm not sure if it's the best way to do this. Me talking to you about setting up a website to sell stuff is like a professional banjo player telling nuclear physicists how to split atoms. Uh, I, I'm brand new to this, so I wouldn't recommend you follow too much of this as advice, but maybe it'll give you ideas that you can uh, research yourself if you're trying to do something like this. But I, um, I decided to, to create a new page on my website that had, it blends in with the website. It looks like a page of the website, but I also bought a second domain and I came up with a brand, a brand name, and that is wrist wrap, but no W at the front. I was gonna have a W at the front, but somebody else already had that. So it's R-I-S-T. W R A P. And uh, I bought the domain, the wristwrap.com, which is where you can find these bracelets, by the way. So once I link the wristwrap.com to my shop page on my Squarespace website, uh, if you type that URL in, uh, you will be taken directly to my shop as if there was no website wrapped around it which is excellent, I think. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't confuse anybody who may uh, at some point be, be looking for the brand. They'll be able to get straight there through the website. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it, but it seemed like seeing as I was already paying for the website that I already had, that it was the smartest thing to do. They have all kinds of different levels of e-commerce plans that you can uh, that you can get involved with but uh, they're, they're all quite expensive compared to the ordinary business plan that I have uh, the downside is that they take a percentage of anything that I sell I think it's fairly small number three percent or so but uh, if this takes off if people actually buy these things I'll probably switch to to one of the commerce plans in which there isn't that, um, they, don't, they don't take that 3%, that you just pay a fee. As far as setting up the shop goes, uh, with Squarespace, you add each product um, one by one. Uh, and uh, there are, there's a shortcut that I didn't find out about till later, because for the first product I added, which was one of the Nikon bracelets, um, I, I wrote a bunch of additional content for search engines. Um, I, uh, I, I wrote a, a big page of additional information about how the bracelets are made, uh, why I'm making them and all that kind of stuff. It was, it's a, a fairly uh, involved pictorial description of what's going on. And uh, the second uh, product that I added, which was a Canon bracelet, I had to do all of that again. And it was a monumental task because there are about eight pages of information you need to fill in about each product, pricing, sizing, shipping, um, and uh, descriptions, and so on and so on. But after a while uh, in frustration, I watched a few videos, which I should have done beforehand, that explained how you can duplicate one product and then just change the pictures and, and, and the content so you can keep the labor intensive parts the same. If this catches on at all, um, I, know that, um, I know that if photographers like these things and they buy one and they wear it and somebody asks about it, but they're not into photography. They're not going to be interested in buying a, uh, a photographer's bracelet, uh, I wouldn't imagine. So I will be introducing a line of non-photographer's bracelets, but that's not been my priority up to now because I wanted to get this photographer's line out there and see what happens. Uh, the day I put the shop up, 
I got an order. I almost fell out of my chair. I didn't know what, what to do with myself. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> I appreciate it. I hope you like it. It should be there soon. So um, uh, I, I, know that the, I know that the shop works, but I was not expecting that to happen. Um, so who knows what will happen once, once the word gets out, which is the next question. Marketing. I know nothing about marketing. I don't know where my priority should be. If, if one of you guys is a marketing specialist, maybe you can, you can tell me. Uh, but I've also been putting some um, photographs of different uh, style bracelets on my Instagram account. Uh, I still haven't done anything on Facebook. I suppose I need to do that as well. Uh, but I'm not in a position to 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 buy um, uh, marketing, you know, from a, a marketing firm or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just going to, it's basically going to be word of mouth and, and using um, social media, which I'm terrible about uh, keeping up with. I never think to post to social media because I'm really, I'm thinking about my core audience, which is you guys, and getting videos out. Uh, and that, that it, you know, trumps everything else. Uh, but I, I need to find a way to take a little bit of time to to get these um, the these messages out to other people. But like I said, you're not going to hear it on this channel anymore after today. So when I set up the shop, I needed to figure out how I was going to get the product out to people that ordered it uh, quickly um, and uh, uh, without too much hassle and without too much cost. It's one of the things that really, um, really irks me about uh, about buying stuff online is the, the the shocking cost. I was actually getting some wrist wrap labels, uh, uh, tags that I want to attach to the bracelet when I mail it out. That's got the the URL for the shop on it and nothing else other than my thank you on the back. Uh, and uh, I found this one where I could buy a thousand and I designed them and had them all ready to go. And then they added at the last minute the shipping charge, which was like $39 for a stack of these things. So it's a bit of a ripoff. And I, the last thing I want to do is have people turned off buying this because the shipping is expensive. I decided that the, the best and cheapest way was first class uh, post first class mail through the US mail um, or the US Postal Service. Uh, that is inexpensive, and uh, because this is a small flat package, um, uh, it, it's delivered pretty fast. I mean, frequently I'll, I'll send a, a package this size uh, within the United States and it'll arrive two days later. I decided on flat rate shipping partly for simplicity, but partly because once I found that the cheapest way to send a package to Europe uh, or to the Middle East uh, was by using US Postal Service first class mail, I decided that there was just no point using anything else. There's no, I take it, there's no real urgency. I mean, uh, a couple of extra days in transit to save you uh, 15 or 20 or 50 dollars certainly seems seems a good trade-off anyway i just decided on first class mail which means i i have set the the shipping at five dollars domestically which is about exactly what it costs to send one of these and 15 dollars um to um uh, everywhere else in the world or anywhere else in the world i have a feeling i'm gonna uh take a spanking on that because the the prices that I had were for Europe. I know a, a lot of you guys are in the UK um, and I kind of set the price on that but um, I guess I'll just have to see what happens if one of my uh, one of my viewers from down under um, orders one of these things. It might eat up all my profits for that month. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. So that is it. That's the, uh, the whole story on the new shop. I'd be super grateful if you'd go check it out, wristwrap.com, no W at the front. 
and uh, and let me know what you think or buy a bracelet or don't buy a bracelet but it's all good i won't be doing this again and we're going to get back to regular programming uh, as of a few days from now when i'm going to put up the macro lighting cage that we've been talking about thanks again for watching stay safe take pictures wear bracelets eat your vegetables later <laughs>